this is what I think is about my final build. I've worked out some of the small little details of the Sokka, the self-advancing knee ascender. I now make it with an industrial and a commercial sewing machine. So this is a, a rope tacking type sewing machine that puts some very heavy thread uh, to bind the webbing together. The, uh, the webbing has, there's a double webbing at the bottom where the carabiner connects to make it uh, more durable. The uh, body of the ascender is now bolted to the body of the socket to also make that secure. I've eliminated any of the uh, zip ties. There's a double Dyneema bungee cord. The Dyneema is very wear resistant and it's very strong. At the end of this video, I'll post some statistics as far as brake values, weights, and some of those comparison things that people would like to have. The foot loop is very simple, um, and I just leave it. I just leave it on my foot when I'm doing my climb, and it stays there. And it makes it very easy to take the self-advancing knee ascender, the Sokka, and it makes it very easy to, on the side of your foot attach that carabiner and then it, you, then you don't have a chance of it getting caught in the laces. You can remove it from either side of your boot but when you take it off it comes right off. This is a fairly inexpensive black diamond carabiner that it comes with. They're good for about 350 pounds. I'll explain some other options to that at the uh, tail of this video. The ascender is a CT simple ascender it's built as a hand ascender, not as a chest ascender, and there's a difference, and I'll explain that in a moment. But um, one of the advantages is that it's easier for them to build because it doesn't have the curve. It also works perfectly with the Sokka because without the curve, it stays in perfect alignment with the climbing line. It comes with a very inexpensive carabiner. This is just a small, cheap, inexpensive keychain type carabiner. You can connect this to a part of your harness. I've explained that in several videos uh, about the importance of connecting it as close to the climbing line as you can, but not interfering with your climbing device. The fact that this can stay, this length can stay very short, makes it very effective because you're not having any of this bungee, you're not having any of this apparatus come up and meet your climbing system, whether you be a rope runner, or rope wrench, whatever you have here, this is what makes this nice, is it's compact, it's a self included unit that stays away from your climbing system. So this is inexpensive and it's meant to be inexpensive so that as you're working at getting this dialed in, if you put too much force on this, you'll break the carabiner rather than breaking the Dyneema bungee. One advantage of the Dyneema bungee, and I'll post breaking strengths of the Dyneema too, it's very uncommon to have that break. But one of the advantages of this system is that you can replace this Dyneema bungee for about $5 as opposed to having to spend 50 to have it completely rebuilt. All you have to do is pull the uh, Dyneema bungee back up through the through the tubing and you've got a whole new uh, Dyneema bungee ready to go. I'm doing two colors now. It comes with black down the middle and red on the outsides. Or it comes in all black. The carabiners are all now this gold color. This is, this is the foot loop. It's just a simple foot loop. It's not life support. None of this is life support, but it has an elastic to keep it to keep it securely on your foot, so that when you're not actually climbing with it, it stays with your foot. Um, it's sewed together. It wears very well. Another advantage is that it's flat, whereas if you're standing on a rope, that roundness creates a bump underneath your foot. This is flat. It's more comfortable to stand on. Uh, when you're in the tree or standing on a branch or even walking on the ground, it's flat. I put some rubberized material on that. Oftentimes that will come off 
but um, there's plenty of stitches in there and that should last a very long time. This is also a replaceable part that can be sold separately. Quick explanation. This is a CT chest ascender. The chest ascender is built differently than a foot ascender is. Um, the difference, now I was going to explain the difference between a chest ascender and a foot ascender. Again, this is a CT chest ascender. The configuration is different. Notice where the back of that, we'll call this the back of the ascender, where that is. Normally, most of us climb with a right foot ascender. Notice that the back of the foot ascender is towards my back. It points towards my back. This is a left foot ascender. Again, if I put this on my foot, notice that the back of that is towards my back. The reason for that, and I've done another video t talking about the configuration and the dynamics of these, is that that cam engages better on a rope if you point your toes slightly forward. You're most efficient if you're going just straight up and down the rope. But if you point at all, you point your, fo toys, your toes forward, then that helps this cam engage on the rope. So the Saka is built in the same configuration as a left foot ascender, not like a chest ascender. Again, this was built as a hand ascender. In fact, if you wanted to use this when you're not using it on your foot as a hand ascender, you can use it in that configuration and have a little, little wider structure to hold on to than a rope. But again, the, the structure is the same as a left foot ascender, we have the same build, so when you step on this, if you step slightly, if you're stepping slightly behind the line, as you raise your foot to straight up, it's in effect the same as pointing your toe slightly forward, which is a normal and natural movement, and again, that makes it more efficient, and it makes this CT simple a perfect configuration for a knee ascender on the left foot. You can use it on the right foot if you have only a left foot ascender. You can use this on the right foot, but again you lose some of that uh, design characteristic that they were trying to build into the ascender. When I eliminated the uh, zip ties and bolted this to the ascender, I've also preserved the holes on the top of this ascender, so if somebody wants to it's very easy to take a carabiner and attach this to accessory loop on your saddle. If you are concerned about anything getting caught on that while you're climbing, it's very easy to take that carabiner off and all you have is just a few ounces of webbing that's hanging from your saddle. Very non-intrusive. The other thing when you set this up, this is just one final statement. Um, Try to keep this as short as you possibly can. Keep that attachment low on your harness. Keep all of this away from your climbing system. If you have to attach it up here somewhere, then you really don't need a Sokka. Use, use something else. Use, use a bungee over your shoulder. Even just, put a, even just put a bungee attachment up here. Bungees should be strong enough that if you're going to attach it up here at your chest harness someplace, you could run that bungee just down to your uh, foot ascender and you don't need a Sokka. The beauty of this is that you can keep this very short and very compact and keep it attached very low on your harness so it stays away from all of your climbing system. Here is, here is another useful configuration. I usually have a BMM revolver in my climbing tools. Getting rained on a little bit. Good thing I'm wearing sunglasses. Um, what you can do is use this, if you ever are inclined to use a 3 to 1 configuration, it makes it very easy to set this up for a 3 to 1, if that's up your rope, and of course I'm connected down here to my saddle, I now have a pretty reasonable 3 in 1 if I wanted to go and do a limb walk. Um, say I've ascended with my foot ascender 
and then I want to go out and do a limb walk and it's a, sleep, a steep return, I can set this up for a 3 to 1 and use that as a 3 to 1 until I come back and then again continue up the rope on a rope walk. Again, the, the socket comes with a fairly inexpensive uh, black diamond carabiner that breaks at about 350 pounds if you were to put that much force on it. It also has a little hook. This black diamond carabiner has this little hook on it. And some have reported that if they're not taking their time, sometimes that little hook can get stuck on your loop and be a little irritating getting it off. This is an option. This is a uh, Petzl carabiner, but notice it doesn't have the hook. The hook is internal. So if you use something like this, it's not only stronger, more expensive, but it won't ever have that little hook that would get caught on your foot loop. So that's, that is an option for uh, the foot loop carabiner replacement. Quickly, there's a lot of ways to do rope walking. They've been doing rope walking for a very long time. Uh, this, is, this is one method, putting a bungee over my shoulder. It goes over my shoulder, then this connects to my foot loop, and it goes up and down. Because it's a single bungee, it's not as strong. The recoil is not as quick. Also, you have all of this that gets in the way of your climbing system. And when you're tending your system, you have something else that tends your climbing system. Now you have this that comes across. It's a great way to do it. It's just not as compact as a Sokka. You can climb a double drope and put uh, foot ascenders on each foot. Um, you can attach a uh, foot ascender to the body of your climbing gaffs and use that. Uh, you can actually just take a straight piece and have that come up from your foot. Um, you can put a, uh, you can, you can actually take a piece and then uh, put a, a belt around your knee and strap it to your knee. All of those things actually work. They're just not going to be as compact and as efficient. If you strap it to your knee, you're actually getting just a, a step and a half because that knee step that comes up is nothing like a foot step. And it also makes you rock backwards, which was ineffective or inefficient for a rope walking system. So you can strap it to your knee and watch any video of somebody that does that, and it makes it look like they're taking a step and a half rather than two full steps every time they progress up the rope. So keep it keep it low. You can attach it to your belt. Just keep it out. Just keep it out of the way of all of this, or don't have one. Did that look weird down there? All right. So do I need to do that opener?